Hello and welcome to the Love Chamber of Death. The notions that are about to be assaulted by an assault rifle include you need to find your true love so that you can be happy and that there is only one true love for every person out there, and that love only becomes true whenever mutual desire for sex is involved. But these notions are wrong. I will not provide you with the truth on true love. Ah yes, true love. You've got to want it. Your life will not be complete without it. Wesley from The Princess Bride held on to the hope of true love, and it helped him survive getting 50 years of his life getting sucked out of him from the machine in the pit of despair. Suicide suddenly becomes justifiable whenever your true love dies, like in Romeo and Juliet. Websites such as eHarmony, Match.com, Christian Mingle, Zeusk, and Farmers Only make money off of true love's lure. In the book industry, as far as what genre makes the most money, that title belongs to the romance slash erotica section, making approximately $1.4 billion every year. In comparison to the number two and number three slots, which belong to the mystery and crime sections and the religious slash inspirational sections, which earn about $700 million each. About half that. Love sells, and just about everybody gets involved with it at some point in their life. Now, in order to really debunk these notions, we're going to have to do a little bit of a thought experiment. And here are the only rules that I've come up with. If the antithesis is true, even in the most extreme of circumstances, then the original thesis is false. This is important because whenever you want to make a theoretical claim, you want that claim to be as close to 100% accurate as you can possibly get. Otherwise, it'd be unreliable and completely subjective and almost not worth discussing. So just for an example, let's say that I say the statement, I agree with what Christianity stands for. Even though the antithesis is I disagree with what Christianity stands for, that statement is true some of the time. And since neither of these statements are absolute, both the thesis and the antithesis are false due to inaccuracies. I call this sideways reasoning because it is a form of reasoning that can eliminate falsehoods just by looking across the aisle and genuinely considering the opposite point of view. And if a thesis cannot hold up against all a priori knowledge, then all posteriori knowledge that will be inferred by the thesis will be false. For example, if I say the sky is blue, we know that it is false because the blueness of the sky is due to sunlight bouncing off the atmosphere. So if we a priori ties the definition of sky to be the atmosphere contained by the earth, a more accurate thesis statement to make future references will be, the sky is colorless in and of itself, but can appear blue, orange, black, gray, in a wide variety of colors depending on where we are on the earth and where the earth is in relation to the sun and also based off current weather conditions. I call this backwards and forwards reasoning and it is reasoning that can eliminate falsehoods by focusing on the details of a statement where we go backwards to refine our details and then come back forward with a new truer statement which may or may not have to go through that process again. Now let's do a thought experiment on some of the things that I said about true love earlier. You need to find your true love so that you can be happy. This statement creates a direct line connecting true love and happiness. The ridiculousness of this statement can be found with a little bit of sideways reasoning, which gives us the statement, you cannot be happy without your true love. And of course, if you derive your happiness from just one person and you don't derive it from other things, you will be devastated whenever your true love does something truly human and messes up. To refine the statement, all you have to do is disconnect the dependence of happiness on finding your true love. Finding your true love can be a source of happiness, but there are many other sources where happiness can be found. There is only one true love for every person out there. You gotta find your one true love. To see the bullshit behind this, just ask any widowed, divorced, or remarried person out there. If there was only one true love for every widow and widower out there, in order to marry again, they would have to steal somebody else's true love just to be moderately happy with someone who is not their true love. There is no finite number of people who could be a source of true love in your life. All it takes is a person willing to invest relationship time with you. So there are actually a lot of potential true loves for every person out there. Basically, if you invest time in people, you eventually reap true love. 
Love only becomes true when there is mutual desire for sex involved. Like the first statement, this statement connects a direct line from sex and true love. Although this statement may be a good indicator, or perhaps just a good definer, of a preconception that we have about true love, there are enough examples where this is not true to deprive it of its logicalness. Just for a moment, imagine all of the asexuals who have ever gotten married. They may have found their true love, yet their personal desire to engage in sexual intercourse is either very low or non-existent. I think that would be a good plot and title for a movie. True Love, an asexual story. If you don't have true love, you will only ever be half a person who is always incomplete without their better half. This is another good movie plot, but it's for a couple of horror films. Lights of the Living Half of People Peter Dinklage, a famous small person actor, leads around an army of stub people and half people jumping around on one leg, searching for their better halves. Go watch it. Another good movie title is Saw 69, The Divorce. Jigsaw just lets married couples end their marriages on their own terms. But when one person becomes two again, you will never be the same again. And it'll be a little bit messy. Go watch it. Honestly, if you are single, you should be spending a lot of your singleness time making yourself the best and complete person that you could possibly be so that you can have a much easier time finding your true love and keeping your true love once you have them. Your life will not be complete without true love. I don't really want to spend too much time debunking this one because it is actually so close to being accurate. It doesn't specify a true love, but keeps true love itself as its own individual concept worthy of enhancing your life. So in that respect, it is a much more admirable and worthy goal to strive for rather than just looking for someone to duck in your love holes. But to go so far as to say that true love will complete your life in itself is kind of futile in my opinion. Perhaps the best way to make this statement better is this. True love that is put into personal action until the day that you die will provide a completeness of sorts to life regardless of how long that life is. But I digress. If all these notions about mainstream true love are so easy to counter, again I ask, why is finding your true love so important? This opinionating statement of finding true love is important must have some truth and merit to it in order to be accepted by the masses, right? I mean, it can't possibly be that the positive concept of love put right next to the hopefully positive concept of truth would suddenly create a super positive metaphysical concept that crosses all subjective, objective, and possibly even dimensional barriers and should be sought by any means necessary? Well, that is kind of what I am saying. On the surface, it doesn't really make much sense to try to differentiate love from true love. What, is regular love always false then? Is it even capable of being false? If you declare to someone that they are your true love, does that make the statement always correct? No, of course not. Love should always be tested in thought, emotion, and action. And if you don't, there will always be a donkey Quack. hole ready to do donkey holy things to you. There will be a creepy guy with a van offering love and candy. There will be a nice looking businessman ready to take advantage of your money. And so on and so on goes the facade of love for the purposes of personal gain. True love isn't something that you can buy or can receive on a quick whim. It is something you can do by giving love over a long period of time, preferably a lifetime's worth. A good quote that I found and one that I now pass on to you is from Lawrence Durrell who said, The richest love is that which submits to the arbitration of time. To put into the terms of the true love narrative, you could say that the truest love is that which submits to time's judgment. For honestly, you cannot just find someone, fall in love, and bada bang, bada boom, you got yourselves a true love. Love is a journey that has no intention of ending. It only becomes truer as a purely subjective measure of its potency slash intimacy, as well as a result of its duration. Now, I could go on to say what exactly is love, which we already know is, baby, don't hurt me, don't hurt me, no more. I could just read 1 Corinthians 13 from the Bible because it gives a pretty decent description of it. I could point out the potential hazards and risks it takes to love faulty human beings, comparing it more to a dangerous battlefield worthy of being feared and avoided. I could emphasize a distinction between independent love and an unhealthy conditional attachment. I could also mention that it may take a long time for someone to give you the time to truly love you and give you the amount of attention that you deserve. I could, but other than the short paragraphs worth of time, 
I won't. Because the purpose of this video was to differentiate and distinguish between mainstream culture's idea of true love and what is truly important within that notion. So as a result of my heartfelt ranting, hopefully you realize that finding your true love isn't that important. However, finding true love and acting as an agent of true love is important. Because ain't nobody got time to be an agent of hate or apathy in this already short life. Happy Valentine's Day, and don't worry about finding someone to blast off your special love parts. Because the love in the phrase, your true love, is the only part that is important. This video was made by Tim and Titus Navely on a channel called Death of an Ocean. And definitely not by two people who think that they are each other's one and only true love. Ain't that right, honey? Your silence tells me all that I need to know. Honey, you know I would still prefer a delicious mutton lettuce tomato sandwich. Okay, I love it. If you would like to become more enlightened, depressed, or enraged with us, depending on your previous notions, please do us a giddy and click on those like and subscribe buttons. And until next time, kumbaya, mother daughters. What is love, 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 baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Bam, 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 b